Okay, welcome everyone to my review of Wars and Battles. Alright, let's kick off this review and get it going. Now, um, this game has been in development for about a year. I was looking forward to this game because there was uh, really good screenshots, really good description uh, of what this game is going to uh, embody. And uh, a nice little splash screen too. So, uh, jumping into the game here, you got this nice user interface, which allows you to navigate through the uh, battles and wars and campaigns that you have. This um, actually leads me to, um, I don't normally use uh, do this, I usually put my cons toward the middle of the video, but since we're here, I'm not going to go back. Um, my first con of the game would be that, as you can see, there's a lot of these campaigns here. All of them have 2015 on the top left corner. There is only one campaign that is available at launch, which is Normandy. Not a big con, but at launch we only have Normandy. If you want to get uh, any other ones, you're going to have to wait to 2015. I was really looking forward to this one. I'm a big Gettysburg uh, uh, historian, fanatic uh, about the battle, so uh, I was so hoping for this one. But. One cool thing I do like about it is the, um, and this actually can jump right into my first pro, is the user interface. It is nice and easy to kind of navigate through them, and it really has some really amazing art here. You know, like a lot of times we don't appreciate the art uh, in games, but, you know, when it's this good, I take notice. So starting off, uh, I actually have a game going, so we can just jump in. And this has a little bit more of the user interface here. Got a nice background, UI. Show a little bit more when the map loads. So when you zoom out here, they did this nice cool thing where the game is actually a map on a desk and you're kind of like Eisenhower, the four star general. Um, and you're kind of running the show here. You got your Colt on your right hand side and uh, canteen there and all this stuff and you can zoom in right in. You kind of feel like Eisenhower in a way. Actually, wasn't Eisenhower a five star general? I don't think it was four star. I think it was five stars. But anyway, probably can correct me in the comment section. <laughs> um, so that's my uh, first pro. Really nice user interface. I really like it. You can even go into this journal here and it kind of gives you that nice look here. That's a little description here, which is kind of cool. I like that. Um, my second pro. It has a nice looking map. Now, zooming in, you have this. I mean, it's the it's not the most beautiful map I've ever seen in my life uh, for a game, but there's a, there's a lot of detail here. You can see the Atlantic Wall here, uh, beaches, all that good stuff. Um, and one cool thing I like about the map is they didn't put too much detail into it to the point where I'm like, okay, I have no idea. What is this? Is this a field? Is this hedgerow? Is this a road? Is this a river? It's very easy to kind of see, all right, well, there's a river here. This river is up here. And this looks like a beach with some uh, fortifications there. Very easy to kind of identify that. Very easy to kind of identify where the roads go, this and that. I like that. Some games put in too much detail and it's just like, eventually it becomes too much for your eyes to process and you're like, oh gosh, I, this is too much. But I do like this. Um, so it is a really nice looking map and um, that's my pro. Now my third, going into my third pro here, uh, I like the uh, zooming system. Now pinching and zooming is very easy and it's smooth and fluid. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably like, who cares about the zooming feature? Well, believe it or not, I mean, a zooming feature is vital because you, you want to kind of navigate around the map efficiently, right? Without having, and some games I play where the zooming feature is just horrendous, where like you pinch in and you have to wait like five seconds to actually zoom in, you know? Um, this one is nice and fluid. It works in kind of... Get it at any angle that you want to view the map. If you want to fight the battle like this, I don't know why you want to fight the battle like this. I usually fight it like that. Okay. But you can fight any perspective you want to, which is cool. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, the developers did optimize the game um, 
for the iPad, and I really like that. All right, moving on. Um, we have two more pros. And diving in, um, let's see if I can find... The movement system in this game is pretty simple. So it's intuitive and it's easy to use. You tap on a unit, all the hexes highlight. You can even tap three stacked units, separate. I want the 120th. I want them to go here. You tap the, and then you could double tap for them to move faster. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I can have this guy meet up with these units and then tap again and tap again for fast. Quick, simple, easy. I like that. I'm gonna have this guy go here. Whoop. Quick, simple, easy. I really like the movement system. Quick, simple. Um, and that is very, very important. Because last thing you want to do is like tap a unit and be like, why can't I move it? You know, you're getting the manual and you have, you're playing a game, you have the manual in your right hand, you're like, oh my gosh, this is not how it's supposed to be and I paid money for this. You know, that's the last thing you want, right? <laughs> so, showing you the combat system. So, I'm going to tap on this uh, tank here. Uh, I actually have a, I think that's a Sherman. And so, as soon as you tap a unit, you're next to a German unit, they highlight in red, letting you know that you can attack them. Tap it, tells you the chance of winning, which is not good for me. Cool thing I like about this um, is that it's simple, intuitive, but also you can actually select the units nearby where you can see B1 in the center. You can deselect it or add them into the attack and it's supposed to change your chances to win. Um, but this unit is not that strong, so it really doesn't improve my chances. Uh, and then you just click attack and I'm probably gonna get Slaughter in this one, but well, not too bad actually. Not too bad. So that's the movement and combat system. I like it. <laughs> Basically, I mean that you know I don't have to as long as I don't have to pick up a manual and a rule book to actually like play it. I like it. It's that simple. Um, so going on to my last pro. I don't use this a lot, but I really like it. On occasion, I do use it. You can tap here, and then you do have a, a nice, you can do a couple cool things. You can change, uh, this is kind of cool. Um, this is not the pro, but I like this. You can kind of see how far you advanced. Uh, but my pro is you can switch to 2D mode, and you can get this kind of really cool 2D top-down perspective of the game. Now for you guys who are into John Tiller games, I, I, I play a lot of John Tiller games, uh, this is kind of reminiscent of that. I feel like I'm playing a John Tiller game at this point here, and I can tap units, selecting a unit that can actually move would probably be helpful. And I think I had them move already. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any more units to move. I don't think I do. No, I'm all out of move, units to move, but if I had a unit I could move, they would move. Oh, I think I moved them all. Yeah, I did. Okay, whatever. But anyway, so that, that's my point. Um, it has a nice, really cool um, top-down 2D view, which uh, I do use on occasion, uh, but I do like the 3D view more. So those are my pros. Diving into cons. All right. So my first con would be artificial unit values. I'm not too crazy about them. And as you can see on the screen, um, units are judged based on a 1 to 30 uh, unit value. I got 19 here, I got 5 here, uh, 6 here. I'm not too crazy about these kind of unit values. I like um, when games represent units based on their real world like strength values. So this 116th Infantry Regiment, instead of having 6 out of 8 life points, right? Why can't we just label them having 4,000 men? So when I attack a German unit that has 8,000 men and I inflict 6,000 losses on them, which can be possible, you never know, it's it's immersive, you know? It's like, whoa, I just kicked the crap out of that German SS unit. I just, like, obliterated them. But attacking that same unit and inflicting, you know, 6 out of 8 loss on that German unit I mean, that doesn't carry the same weight as inflicting 6,000 troops 
in casualties on that German unit. It just doesn't carry and doesn't immerse you as much as using real world troop strength. Um, that was the first con. Second con would be let's see, I would actually have to pass the turn to shoot a second con, so we're just gonna pass the turn. Yeah, I'm heading towards the defeat. <laughs> I'm not doing too good on that one, on this campaign. Oh, that's not good. All right. Yeah, I'm not doing too well. And they got a lot of armor, the Germans. Oh, gosh, four life points. That's not good. All right. Um, so, tapping. So, this is my um, last con of the game. So, instead of having, like... Simple statistics like the Germans attacked here. I have a lot of statistics and value points per unit. So taking the 147th Infantry Brigade, I have life points, I have FAT, I have STA, which I still don't know. I have an ATT, which represents attack, and I have a defensive value, which represents DEF. Um, and there's a lot of values in this game that you have when you're dealing with units. And honestly, it's just it's just too much. When you you know, when you you have to say, all right, what's their life point? What's their attack rating? What's their defensive rating? What's their STA rating? What's their FAT rating? It's just like, oh my gosh, it's too many ratings, it's too many values. It would have been easier if it was just one simple, like this unit has 30 strength. Simple. Rather than me saying, all right, this unit has eight life points and 15 attack and three defense and blah, blah, blah. It's just like, it, it's a lot to, <laughs> to take in per so many units. Um, so I would have loved it if there was a little bit of a simpler uh, value system per unit rather than having five value systems per unit. But that's basically all my cons. I have nothing left. <laughs> Couple recommendations. Uh, my, well, actually only one. Uh, I would love an iPhone version of this game. Currently, there's no iPhone version of this game. And considering there's an iPhone 6 out, an iPhone 6 Plus that has a 5.5 inch display, that's big. <laughs> um, you can probably fit this game inside that screen and still have a good experience. And the reason I would want it is probably because on my way to work, you have a coffee in one hand and be trying to liberate Khan in the other, which would be kind of cool, you know? Um, but yeah, that, that would be my only recommendation. Um, this game is in the App Store for $7.99. Now, you're probably asking yourself, well, is it worth $7.99? And I can tell you, I've been playing this game quite a bit, and I know there's only one battle in this so far, but... For $7.99, it's worth it. You really get a good experience. And this, I know I haven't gotten far in this game. As you can probably tell, I, uh, I'm not, I just kind of just connected all the beaches at this point. <laughs> but this took a long time. This took like, I don't know, an hour or two or three hours. It took a while for me to get this far. Um, primarily because uh, I'm very... You know, you have to organize your attacks and move your units and plan your attacks. Yeah, I'm that kind of person. <laughs> but for $7.99, it's a great game, um, especially if you're going on for a long road trip, which I'm actually planning to. Uh, I plan to add in a couple more hours to this game. So that does it for my review, guys. I would recommend it for the uh, for uh, the $7.99 pricing that they have on the App Store. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next review. I'll see you then.